Alright, cheers on that. Now, I, I guess you've been watching the World Cup over the last few weeks. Um, what, what do you think of the standards? I mean, they're disappointed for Cameroon? Yeah, just let's forget about Cameroon. Because <laughs> okay, so we won't talk about Cameroon, we won't talk about England. Wow. <laughs> Let, let's talk about Southeast Asian football. You're one of the few people, you're probably the only person in this hotel where we are now who's played in the World Cup. Um, and you, you've been working around the football in this, in this part of the world for many, many years. Why aren't we seeing an Indonesia or a Thailand or a Singapore or Malaysia? Why aren't they... Why aren't they... There? Why aren't they getting close to the World Cup? Uh, in this case, I, I think it's a matter of standards. We don't have the, the right organization here. Maybe we don't have the right uh, players. Maybe we don't know how to help players grow. We don't know how to make them become good enough to play in the highest level. You can check in uh, uh, the best league in Europe, you will never find the players from Indonesia or Singapore or Thailand. Or, so it's very, very difficult for us to go to the highest level. Is it a question of ability? I mean, some of the, some of the players in this part of the world are... No, I, I, I don't think it's a matter of ability because now I'm involved with the uh, grassroots program with uh, SSI Arsenal and trust me, I can find uh, very, very good youngsters here. I went to Makassar, I went to Surabaya, under 12, under 13, under 14, under 15, we still have the good, good players. Mm -hmm. We don't know when they reach the under 16, under 17, and then everything disappears. So there is something we... we there, there's nothing in place? There's no structure for them at that age? Yeah, as far as there is nothing in place. The, 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 the standard of the, the, the super school, they have a national standard, mm -hmm. right here they didn't have. Isn't there talk of a football academy starting? Uh, maybe. Maybe, maybe they will start by next week. Uh, a few people want to, 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 to be academies, but uh, for now we, we have nothing. You're you sounding pretty negative. Do you see any hope, at least in the, of one of the Southeast Asian nation t nations, Getting some, making some progress at least in the qualifying round instead of no. just being cannon fodder for everyone? I, I can see hopes because I, I, as I told you before, I'm involved in the press program with Arsenal. So I know that in, uh, in Indonesia, you have a very, very gifted players. Very gifted players. But uh, if we cannot uh, uh, help them grow, we'll lose them in the road. So if under 13 they are good, and there is no structure to help them, under 15 they are gone. And this is a real problem in Indonesia. Okay, so imagine then, I, mean, I, give, you the, I give you the keys to the PSSI, you're now in charge of the PSSI. What's your first, what's the, what's your first thing to do? What would, how would you change it? Yeah, the, the, the first thing I think, the, the first thing to do is to, okay, come back to the, come back to the basic. So, what do, what do we have? Where do you want, where um, Indonesia football wants to go? And uh, when we know where we want to go, so we have, which mean do we have? So we start with the grassroots, develop, development program with the grassroots, and then grow and grow and grow and grow, maybe 10 years program. We have to do that. There is a national schools competition now, I believe, is that right? Yeah. An LPI? Uh, Piala president for the Super School, yeah. yeah. And, and there is the Pedidikan League. Pedidikan League, yeah. Okay. Pedidikan League. Yeah. Are they a step in the right direction? You know, Indonesia is a very big country. Very, very big country. We have, um, I don't know, 200 more people here in this country. Mm -hmm. So that means we, we, we can find players if we want to, to, to go and find players. Mm -hmm. Maybe we don't put the right direction. Because that uh, Pendican League just is just a league. We don't. We, we never know how players, young players, are preparing to, to play those games and to fit in that uh, Pendican League. Because they only take uh, the boys from school and put them on the, the, the pitch to play games. But it's not only a matter of playing. It's how do you help them to to, 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 to to understand about the game of football. Right. right. The most important. They just play football, 
but they, they, have, uh, they don't have the knowledge to how to play football, how to grow as a football player, thinking of uh, high standard competition is a problem. Are the clubs a help or a hindrance in this? You think? You mean? Are the clubs? Do the clubs have any kind of role to play in developing young players? And do they? Do they have any? Do they? I, yeah, I think that the, the, the club have uh, the, the most important role in that. But if you see the, 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 the Super League in Indonesia, all clubs are focused on the A team. They don't take care about the under 23 teams, junior teams and uh, under 15, they just focus on the A team. And the A team, uh, if you want to be champion, only one team will be champion. But you just focus on uh, 15, 14 players, you just forget the, the other 15 players in, in, in the team. So uh, after the season ends, you have just focused on 16, 17 players, you just for, forget how to help the young players to uh, go to the next step where after the, the, the old players are, are gone. Mm. So just focus on the A team is a bad, bad team. I think you told me the other day that you're off to Palembang at the, at the weekend. Yeah. They're, they're going to set up their own football academy, yeah. which is kind of ironic really, because when you think last year they wanted to sign Alexander Duric, who's 39 years old, and they wanted to play him alongside Keith Hamber, who's 37 years old. Mm. So, what's your involvement with the Suwajaya Academy? What is the Suwajaya Academy all about? You know, I think, uh, okay, uh, talking about uh, Duric, he's 39, uh, Kayamba is 37. As long as they can help uh, young players to grow, I think it's a good thing, because they are good players. They're mm -hmm. good players. But besides you contract a uh, mature player, it's, uh, you don't have to forget how to help the youngsters to grow. So now they have that program, classes program from Sibujaya FC. We just hope that from uh, under 30, under 13, under 15, and then we grow and put that players to the best level to replace maybe the Kayamba or the Obioras or... Right. Is that the first of its kind in the country? Uh, Club run yeah, as a club, I think it's the, the, the first experience. The first experience. Most of the clubs now they have under 23 yeah. because it's a regulation of uh, the airline yeah. who asked them to build the under 23 team. So they all have it. But under under 33, there's nothing. I think Sujay is the first team to, to try to uh, have a, an eye on the grassroots. Are you going to be involved in it anyway? Do you cool? have any active role to play in it? or you? No, no, I just. Uh, I would just be there like a guest star to okay. help promote that initiative because now I'm involved with the Arsenal, mm. so I'm going to be with 